there was uh, some wrestling news that's uh, circulating uh, the interwebs, the webs of the YouTubes. And apparently, uh, Brian Pillman is gone, released from uh, AEW. I think I even heard somewhere that he was possibly just, it was very low key that he was uh, being looked at by uh, WWE at the uh, Performance Center. Um, listen, Brian Pillman Jr., geez, I don't know at this point how many people that are watching wrestling remember the name Brian Pillman uh, but his dad was um, quite the uh, wrestler right quite the um, the uh, personality he blurred the lines of what is real and what's not and he was uh, very successful and he died uh, extremely at a young age I believe it was he was not even 40 I forget the exact age but he was not even 40 and um, you know Brian Pillman Jr. comes into um, AEW uses his name um, is in a tag team um, for a little bit there uh, the varsity um, uh, the Varsity Group, I think it's about Varsity Blondes, if I remember correctly. Uh, he was there, but they were they were a tag team, but he really wasn't. Then they weren't really featured all that well, all that much, and then they broke him up. He had an altercation with MJF in Philly, I mean in, uh, in Cincy. And uh, I thought that that was kind of maybe the stepping stone that they needed, that the TV audience needed, your kind of you haven't seen Brian Pillman for a while you see him at his hometown there and uh, on a on dynamite and that's maybe what 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 he needed to, to kind of bounce off of that and they never used him in that regard uh, and just didn't go anywhere now you know you might be saying you know um, Junior is different than his father, right? He maybe wants to carve his own path. Maybe he just wasn't used good. You know, maybe the WWE could use him better. But when you look at WWE's history, uh, you have, for example, you have um, um, C Curtis Axel. Um... Uh, you, Michael M M McGillicuddy at first then, then Curtis Axel. Uh, the point is, WWE really doesn't like to embrace uh, second generation wrestlers, like acknowledge who their parents were. In, in some cases, you know, Curtis Axel was one of them. Bo Dallas, who was uh, the Rotundo family, Rotundo Wyndham. You know, uh, you know the Rotundo family with IRS. They really didn't acknowledge that. So WWE is um, very hit or miss with how they treat second generation stars, and third generation stars, and how they market the offspring of their famous alumni. So that's a weird combination as well. Shake your head, you know. There's there's a instant storyline written already. Whether you're DiBiase's kid, whether you're um, Henning's kid, you know. They also had, you know, um, even prior, even prior to that, they had, you know, famous sons and daughters. Some of them they acknowledge their famous fa uh, uh, famous parents. Some of them don't. Look, Ric Flair, Charlotte Flair. They acknowledge that she is the daughter of Ric Flair. Worked out perfectly for her. Um, especially when you're first being introduced to WWE, sometimes it, it's sink or swim. They had a backbone, they had a story in. 
Charlotte Flair has been running, hit the ground running ever since. So, my long-winded video, the point is, Brian Pillman, I think he has a story. He has enough of a talent. I've seen him in uh, MLW. Uh, to be able to be a regular on TV. It's up to WWE or whoever, wherever they go. The organization and the wrestler itself to tap into. You know, those special qualities, those special written stories already, I guess. So it's interesting to see where Brian Pillman will go.